Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today we're going to be checking out the new IDAS DZ filter sliders. These will be coming in IDAS's most popular filter substrate. So here I have the DTD, that stands for Dusk to Daylight, and I'm going to review this filter separately as like a part two to this video. And I also have the NBZ2. Now I've reviewed every generation of the IDAS NBZ filter, and it is for sure my favorite dual narrowband filter. Always gives me excellent performance in that regard. So if you are interested in this filter, go ahead and check out my review if you'd like, and I'll post a link in the description below. But what's really neat about these filter sliders is they are designed to work with the ZWO M54 generation two filter drawer. So there's no proprietary filter drawer for these. They just go right into that gen two ZWO drawer and slide right back in and you're ready to image. So in the video, I'm going to explain why you'd want to consider these filter sliders over a standard two inch filter, but I can't reveal all the fun yet. So let's go ahead and jump into the video for today. If you know me, I don't like to test products or review products after like two or three days of using them. So I've had these about three months now and have a lot of experience with these filter sliders. So I feel pretty comfortable reviewing them at this point, but I did just wanna share with you that these were sent to me for free. I did not pay for these, so factor that into your decision when you're listening to the information that I'm giving you today, and uh, I'll just be as honest and open in this review as possible. So with that said, let's proceed with the review of these filter sliders and check out why the heck you'd even wanna use them in the first place over a two inch filter. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, why would I want a filter that has that's built in that I can't unthread and move to a different slider when I've already got two inch mounted filters? And that's a reasonable question. And what's really neat about these is the effective aperture of these sliders is much larger than a standard two inch filter. So if you are using a full frame colored camera and you might see some vignetting on the filter, these filters might solve that problem for you. So the effective aperture of a two inch filter is usually about 43 millimeters. The effective aperture of these filters is 47 millimeters. So usually on a full frame sensor, some people will go and use like 52 millimeter uh, filters, but those obviously don't fit in these filter drawers. So these give you a larger filter and they still fit in the ZWO M54 filter drawer, so you get that larger area and hopefully less vignetting with the full frame sensor. So let's actually look at the math and see just how much bigger these filters are than a two inch mounted filter and go from there. For this video, I thought it would be a good idea to compare the new DZ filter sliders with a standard two inch filter, both qualitatively and quantitatively. So let's look at the qualitative first using our eyes if we look at the two inch filter on the left, we can easily see that it is much smaller than the DZ filter on the right. From top to bottom, that DZ filter looks much larger, at least to me it does. Uh, and that's really because you're getting a larger filter. So even though they fit in the same filter drawer, you're definitely getting a larger piece of glass on the right than you are on the left. The area of a circle is pi r squared. So let's take a look at the effective area of the two inch filter on the left first. So most two inch filters have a effective aperture or diameter of 43 millimeters. So we call them two inch filters, but really a lot, the cell takes up a lot of that area. So they're really about 43 millimeters. Now we need to get that to a radius. So we need to divide that by two. So 43 millimeters divided by two is 21.5 millimeters. Then we square that and multiply it by pi. And what we get is 1,452 square millimeters for the area of the two inch filter on the left. On the right with the new DZ filter slider, the effective aperture diameter is roughly 47 millimeters. So again, divide that by two to get a radius. That's 23.5 millimeters. Square it, multiply it by pi, and we get an effective area of 1,734 square millimeters. That's a lot larger. So looking at these side by side, you can totally tell the difference, but numerically, uh, the filter on the left, the two inch filter, 
only is about 83.75% the size of the filter on the right. So about 16.25% bigger the DZ sliders are than the two inch filters. That's pretty substantial. So again, if you're using a full frame color camera and you're not using a, a filter wheel, you're using a filter drawer and you see any vignetting, this could definitely help solve some of those problems you might be having because you are getting a much larger piece of glass in that filter slider. My only concern with the DZ filter sliders, when I first got them, I would put them in the ZWO filter drawer and they kind of slide back and forth just a little bit. So I, I was concerned that the filter slider was not seated in the filter drawer all the way and that would lead to light leakage in my images. So I tinkered around with the filter drawer for a couple days and I found that the solution was to make just a slight adjustment to the grub screw in the filter drawer. So I'm going to show you that next. But now these lock in nice and tight, magnets seal up nicely, and I don't see any light leakage or anything like that in the images, and I can highly recommend these DZ sliders. So I also think that's an important reason why, if you're considering making astronomy reviews or YouTube videos or anything like that, you spend more than a couple days with a product before you review it so you can really learn its pros and its cons, or if there's anything you need to do to optimize its performance. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, how I adjusted the grub screw on the filter slider to eliminate that back and forth play. And uh, then we'll wrap up the video from there. So to figure out what was going on with my DZ slider in this filter drawer, just did a little bit of tinkering. It's actually pretty easy to understand. So I'm gonna just set aside the, the ZWO slider for a second here. And essentially what was happening was I was putting in the, the filter slider and it looked like it was going in all the way, but it actually wasn't seated all the way. So you can see a little bit of side, side to side motion here. And that's because this grub screw was actually tightened too much from the factory. So it was not allowing the DZ slider to go in all the way. So essentially what you need to do is loosen this grub screw up a little bit. And this makes a bit more sense if you look at the slider because there's a notch cut out of it here and there is a notch cut out of the ZWO slider as well, right here. And so basically that notch is indexing on that grub screw, making sure that the filter slider is centered and allowing the magnets to make that attraction. Basically making sure those magnets are lined up. So all I had to do was make sure that this grub screw was loosened up and I get my filters out of the way so I don't scratch them if this accidentally comes out. So I loosen it quite a bit. And what I do here is I just take my DZ slider and now I put it in. Ah, okay, there you go. See, now it locked up properly. The magnets are aligned. See how much better that is? It just, boom, locks up nice and tight there. So what I'll do now is I'm going to tighten the grub screw carefully with this three millimeter flathead screwdriver. There we go. And now it's all the way tight. Obviously you don't want that because you're not going to be able to extract your filter. It's locked in place. So once I've tightened it down against the filter, I loosen it up just slightly so that I can get the filter out and in into the proper position. And then I'll test that with the ZWO slider as well. That one works too. Okay, so my grub screw is now set to the right depth. It protrudes just a little bit there, as you can see, and I'm good to go. The other thing you wanna be careful with, though, is that you don't loosen the grub screw too much, because if you loosen it too much, it's going to stick out and interrupt your imaging train. You won't be able to thread in your adapters all the way and that sort of thing, because this is a not a flat surface if this is sticking up. So there's really a, a sweet spot for it. You want it tight enough that you don't have any issues with your imaging train, but you also want it loose enough that your filters will fit. So yeah, the proper thing to do is just to tighten it against the filter and then just loosen it about a quarter of a turn. And now all those light leak issues that I was worried about are gone. It locks up as it should. It indexes off of this grub screw. The magnets are centered and I am good to go. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, IDAS is going to be offering these DZ sliders in their most popular filter substrates. So the NBZ2 will be offered, the HUIB2, the NGS1, the ODW, the GNB, which I've reviewed before, that's a pretty interesting filter, 
as well as the DTD, which is the Dust to Daylight filter, and I'll be reviewing that one next. So thank you to uh, IDAS for letting me review these samples and this new filter system. And one thing I've always thought is cool about IDAS is they come up with very innovative filter mounting solutions, and these sliders are no different. But I especially like these because I can use them in a very common ZWO M54 Gen 2 filter drawer, or I can just simply go back to my standard ZWO sliders and two inch filters. So because of these filters, I actually bought a second M54 filter drawer, and now I can swap these filters between systems or just keep using my ZWO ones. It just makes things very convenient. So good job IDAS on another innovative filter solution. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review and clear skies.